I have had my political panel standing by patiently as we've obviously got a lot of uh, fire situation across the country at the moment, so we're just going with the updates as they do come in. Julian Simmons and Amanda Rishworth still with us though. Um, Julian, I might get your response briefly to the environmental approvals process. Mm. Is this the test for the government? Because this is what it's been saying. It's not about making things, you know, the, the standards more lax in terms of the environment. Any detail that indicates that would concern people. Is that fair enough? Well, look, yeah, absolutely. These environmental assessments are going to continue to be as strong and comprehensive as they have always been. Uh, but what we're saying is that we're going to use this deregulation uh, agenda, which is at the heart of what we believe as a government in terms of in terms of saving the taxpayer money, saving companies money and time to bring forward some of these projects that cut the mustard when it comes to environmental approvals, to bring them forward and to get them creating jobs sooner for our economy. Westpac in the headlines, as we all know, Amanda Rishworth, is it as simple as saying people need to lose their jobs over this? Uh, well, I think, uh, you know, it's a, a very concerning development. I, I've been very concerned and I think in general, obviously, uh, these specific um, uh, elements will go through the court, but uh, I, I am concerned uh, that we continually see in the news um, uh, uh, issues around um, breaking the law in terms of uh, unethical behaviour uh, by, uh, by the banks and I think um, that is very, very concerning. Um, I think we saw a lot of that during uh, the Royal Commission and it's concerning to see that mm. uh, there aren't processes and procedures put in place uh, by our banks. There are an obligation, responsibilities and they need to take that <coughs> seriously. Uh, and and maybe not enough consequence and we saw a huge fine for Combank if we have a huge fine for Westpac but there's no person held responsible is that does that highlight there's a problem or are you okay with that Oh, well, uh, in my mind, um, that, that will be a matter for the board um, and for the shareholders. Um, but ultimately, um, I think that the, the banks need to look seriously uh, at uh, how they mm. restore trust uh, with the, the Australian people, because at the moment, I think that trust is very low. Up to the board. Uh, you're OK with it, Julian. Do you agree? Well, I think ultimately it is a decision for the board, but I think the message to them is they need to take a real good hard look at their actions, at the CEO's actions, and what protections should have been in place at Westpac in order to monitor these transactions. Uh, and it simply proves the point of why it's so important to have a tough cop on the beat in Austrac. You know, they have the government's imprimatur and funding in order to make sure that they look at uh, who's doing the right thing about monitoring these transactions so that we protect some of the most vulnerable in our society. I wanted to ask actually about something else, uh, Julian Simmons, to do with what the government's looking at uh, on the environment. This is targeting environmental groups, they say, that advocate to boycott companies. So the example from the government is a small company provides food services for a mine it might get targeted over boycotts and it goes out of business. Is it fair enough to, to crack down on that and, and how do you do that exactly? Well, we're having this discussion at the moment about how uh, we do go about it, but I think uh, reasonable Australians would expect that if a, a company is going about their lawful business uh, and that there's people working for that company that rely on families that rely on those jobs, that they shouldn't be subject to bullying and harassment and intimidations. I mean, these are not uh, normal protests in the streets that we're talking about. These are boycotts that rely on tactics of trespass, on intimidation, of bullying, uh, and they, they do well, it in order about to trespass drive here, their lawful this business is out of advocacy campaigns. So people saying, uh, you know, people having a campaign, it might be on Facebook saying, uh, don't support this company because it's supporting coal mining. Now, coal mining, of course, is perfectly legal. But they're not, we're not talking about something where they're going onto someone's property. There are separate laws, there are state laws for that. This is around advocacy. But you're talking about activists who simply because they do not like a business, a lawful business, that they think that they can somehow target uh, those jobs and drive those people out of business, um, businesses that have been built up over generations of families which are employing Australians quite legally. And there has to be a balance there. And I think reasonable Australians would expect mm. that these businesses, if they're operating legally, aren't subject to this kind of bullying and intimidation that we've previously seen. What a what about Matt Canavan urging people to boycott Westpac over not funding a coal mine? 
Well, we need to. Well, Westpac uh, is going through its own issues at the moment with uh, with Austrac, uh, but this is about differentiating. This is not about. Um, asking somebody not to use a particular product or not to go into a certain business. It is about bullying and intimidatory tactics, which but is that's systematic exactly what to part of it is. It's about a business, advocacy. drive someone out of a business. So what do you think? Would, but it's, would, it's is a, what Matt Canavan does okay? Is it about who does it? Or is anyone that advocates to stop a business being used when they're doing something legally, is that going to be the problem? I think it's about, Tom, about picking up on the tactics that some of these activists are, are using, which really cross the, crosses the line between saying, exercise your best judgment as a consumer, and it crosses that line and it goes into, right, how do we intimidate and bully these businesses so that they basically pack up and these jobs are lost from the economy? And that's not what we want. Amanda Ishworth, one of the examples given by the government is, a, as I said, a small company and people keep calling them and they are advised to stay on the line as long as possible to sort of grind the business to a halt. Is it fair enough to want to avoid that action? Well, look, I'm not sure how you legislate uh, this. Um, I think uh, from, I mean, the, the government has preached uh, the ability to have free speech and freedom of expression. Indeed, it's the same government that said uh, people have the right to be a bigot. Um, uh, even if you don't disagree with it, you have that right. So I, I, I really do think that this is probably a thought bubble from the Prime Minister uh, with no clear way forward about how you ensure that consumers and, and shareholders um, have the right to, uh, uh, to, you know, to listen to other people's point of view and to actually exercise that uh, within their, their, their deliberations. I think we often say to consumers, if you uh, don't like uh, the price you're getting from the company or the product you're getting from the company or indeed the service, uh, Choose, choose a different one. Um, I find right. it um, astonishing, quite frankly, that, 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 that the Liberal Party of, of, of free speech is actually going down this road, but I doubt we'll see any legislation because I don't think they're serious about it.